Hi, I'm Betty Salomon, director of Dance Circus. I'm a dancer, a choreographer, um, an eco artist. Uh, what does an eco artist do? An eco artist makes up dances about the environment. Um, this is my studio where the company rehearses. Uh, four of the groups also share the dance studio with us. Uh, some of them are professional companies, some of them are youth companies. Um, every week there's usually a lot of dancers through here, professional dancers, dancers who are trained to become professional dancers, dancers who are here just to have fun, competition dancers, there's dancers who learn ballet, African, modern, competition. And even though right now it looks like I'm here alone, all of those dancers are part of the creative community that I belong to. It's part of a creative community right here in the city of Milwaukee. It's a creative community that includes the state of Wisconsin, the whole country, the whole world. And that's what's so wonderful about creative communities. Creative communities include organizations like Arts at Large, who's sponsoring this program, my own company, Dance Circus. Um, there's lots of other arts and music and dance and theater companies all over the place, all over the world, all over the state, who are also part of that creative community. But most importantly, the creative community is people. It's like you and me. Yes, it's you. Yes, it's also dancers and artists, musicians and singers, but it's also you. And that creative energy is what makes a creative community. Um, so it could be people like you, uh, older, younger, students, families, um, everyone you know, everyone I know, everyone we don't know, everybody is part of the creative community. And so what do creative people do in this kind of a difficult situation called safer at home? Well, one of the things that people all around the world are doing is art. Why? Uh, because when we do art, we use our imaginations. And that helps us create new ways of doing things, even when we know we can't do things the old way. Um, art also helps keeps, keep, keeps us moving, indoors and outdoors. Um, and that's what keeps our bodies strong. And very importantly, art any kind of art, keeps us inspired. And as we're inspired, that keeps our heart centers resilient. And that helps us get through this difficult time. So let's get started making some dances. Um, I like to work with no shoes because uh, shoes are clunky and they can hurt people. Um, bare feet are softer, safer. And, um, and without shoes on, you tend to move a little more carefully, which is a good thing. And no, your feet don't smell. It's your shoes and socks that smell. And you take your shoes and socks off, and your feet will air out in about three minutes. So, the next thing I'm going to ask you to do, as soon as you have your shoes and socks off, is to stand up. And if you need a chair, to dance with us today, that's fine. Please, please feel free to sit in a chair. There's a lots of movement you can do sitting in a chair. Uh, do what you can sitting in a chair. Um, if you can stand up, you're going to get a lot more out of the movement if you can stand up. So, the next thing we need to do is we need to practice social distancing. Or in the dance studio, we call that having enough room, enough room for us to dance without bumping into each other. All right. So we're going to start with a dance that I really like to do because it teaches us all about the different parts of our body. Are you ready to go? Here we go. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Don't touch your face. Point to your eyes and ears. Point to your mouth. Point to your nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Again, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Excellent. 
I told you you would all know this. And the best part about this song, the best part about this dance, is that it has a beginning, middle, and an end. And because it has the format of all these different body parts, it's great fun to take it and change it. So what we're going to do is we're going to change head, shoulders, and knees, and to toes to about, from about being our, about a human body to being like the body of another creature on Earth. Um, let's start with something big. Uh, how about an elephant? So how would we do this dance if we were elephants? We don't, elephants don't have small heads. Elephants have big heads, so the first thing you need to do is create that big elephant head. And they don't have shoulders like we do, but they have shoulders that have kind of march along. And I always think that elephants have kind of baggy knees. And did you know that elephants have three toes? Three toes on each foot. So you're going to show baggy knees and three toes on each foot. The elephant eyes are really small and they're up way on the, way on the side of their heads. And they're kind of squinty. Kind of, like, they kind of have like squinty eyes. And everybody knows what elephant ears look like. Big floppy ears. Wonderful. They have mouths that kind of, they kind of pull things in. Can you see what that looks like? And then of course elephants have the most famous nose in the world. It's this big long trunk. Okay, here we go as elephants. Head, shoulders, baggy knees, and three toes. Head, shoulders, baggy knees, and three toes, and squinty eyes, big floppy ears, and mouth, and nose. Head, Let's do a fish. Now, fish don't have a lot of the same body parts we have, but we're going to make it. We're going to make it work. So, fish um, has a head but no shoulder. Oh, and actually, fish are sideways. They don't. They don't have front like we do. They're sideways. So their head is nice, smooth, and it goes right down to their shoulders, which is where their fins are. They have a fin, fin, fin on the back and a fin on the front. They don't have any knees, but that's where their movement starts. So when they're swimming, their whole body wiggles to get them through the water. So we'll do the whole body from the knees. And then they don't have toes, but they do have a little tail. So show me that little tail flipping in the water. All right, here we go. Oh, um, what kind of eyes do they have? They have eyes, big eyes on kind of the side of their heads. And when they want to look, they have to look at one side and then the other side. So we'll just look at one side. Uh, ears. Yes, fish have ears. They're way at the back of the head. They're under a couple of very specialized scales, but they're back there. Mouth. I love fish mouths. They're big, fat lips. Mouth. Mouth. And Fish don't have noses. So let's think about this. What do they have? Um, we use our nose for smelling, but we also use our nose for breathing. What do fish use for breathing? That's right, they're gills. So we'll show gills at the end. All right, here we go as fish. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes. Come on, you can do this. Head, show me your fins and body and our toes and eyes on the side of our head and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. Excellent. We're going to do one last animal. And this one is a bird. Um, bald eagle. Bald eagles are good. 
So bald eagles have kind of their hair slicked back. And then I always like bald, bald eagles because they look like the Hulk. They have big arms, big shoulders, and they're hunched over. Right? And they don't have, their knees are bag, bit baggy and shaggy. And they don't have toes, but they have talons. So you're going to show me your talons. And now when they look, they have beady eyes and they look just right where they're going to, they're going to see that squirrel over there or that fish down in the water so that they can get it for eating. Um, and then ears. The ears on an eagle are in a really weird place. They're right next to the eyes. Don't touch your face. Right next to the eyes. And there's a couple little tiny feathers over them that protect them. But yeah, they have little tiny, tiny ears right next to their eyes. Mouth. They have a great beak, okay? And the beak comes over the top, and that's good for when they tear things, all right? And their nose is right in the middle of the beak. So if you kind of pull up your two fingers, you kind of look like you can see the nose there. And if you can't pull up those middle fingers, try the first two fingers. But the idea is that you're seeing a little hole in the middle of the beak. Okay? All right, here we go. Head. Shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. And eyes, and ears, and mouth, and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes. Excellent! We're going to be working with the ideas of moving and stopping, which we also call a balance, curved and angled shapes, and fast and slow. So let's get started. We're going to be sitting on the floor, and we're going to start by doing some stretches for our hands, and this is going to get us all connected up. So start by stretching your hands, and really make sure that your hands are stretched and then face them towards each other like they're looking at the mirror at each, at each other. And then you're going to bring the little finger towards your nose. You're not going to touch your nose with it, you're, but you're going to bring your hands forward and that's going to make the elbows come up and keep following that little finger going all the way around and coming back, okay? So the little finger is leading. Try that again. The little finger is leading. The elbows come together. Now the elbows have to go out. The shoulders come up. The little finger comes up. The elbows go down and the shoulders go down. And everything ends up back together. All right. One more time. We're going to make it a little bit bigger so there's going to be a little curve here. The fingers reach out, up, and around. And coming through, little fingers reaching and ending. Good. We're going to reverse that. We're going to have the thumb do the leading, and the thumb's going to go away from the nose. And as it goes away, the elbows come up, but they come up a different way. And the thumbs come up, and then the fingers rotate and come back together. So once more, thumbs pushing away, down, around, and up. And this time, we're going to go a little bit further out, so we're going to take the thumb out and away. And they're going to come under our arms, which is going to make a big stretch. And then come around and end up back where we started. All right. Now, as you can see, some of those movements also look like they were leading right into curving motions. And that's what they do. So if you've got your fingertips leading, you're going to get this curving motion. Coming up to standing, using the arms to curve and make your body turn. You can do curving actions with your hips, which makes your whole body curve. You can do a curving action that starts in the back and comes forward. Your arms can come around. You can do a curving action with your leg. All sorts of curving actions. You can make a curving action that goes backwards. It's actually pretty easy to do. You have to do a big balance, but stretching and curving all over the place. That's good. All right. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some balances, uh, which also includes some stop action. And we're going to imagine that this, a uh, little later in the dance, is like rain coming down on a window. So we're going to start by balancing up on our toes. 
And you're going to use your heels to press down into the floor. That's going to help keep you balanced. So you're not all the way up on the toes, so you're, you don't have, you lose your balance, but you're right where you can hold it by pushing through the heels to balance. And we're going to start with our arms up. And we're going to use angled movements to come down. So we'll start with dropping our fingers, dropping our wrists, dropping our elbows, dropping our arms, dropping our knees, dropping our hips. See how they're all angled movements? Dropping our shoulders, dropping our head, and touching the ground. Finding our balance, back to an angled shape, all these different angles in the body. Now press your heels into the ground to come up to standing. And here we go, pressing up again. This time we're going to do it a little bit differently so you can kind of just do parts of your body, hips, knees, angles, drop, other knee, hip, head, shoulder, arm, shoulders, Knees, hips, down, head, down, drop. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to make this as interesting as possible and trying to use the idea of the rain coming down the windows. And just keep dropping using angled shapes. Drop, 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 drip, 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 all the way down the window. Excellent. Another way to balance is to balance on one foot. Now, a triangle is the strongest support so what you do when you do this is you're going to balance on one foot and you're going to use your big toe, your little toe, and your heel as the three parts that are holding your body in one place. And you can shift your weight from the little toe to the big toe to the heel and that kind of keeps you balanced. Yes, you wobble a little bit, but you don't fall over because you're constantly shifting your weight. All right, we're going to combine some angle movements with this balance. And if you reach one foot out in front of you, and one arm back behind you and the other arm out to the side and you stretch, it makes it much easier to balance. You can also do it by pulling your elbows and knees in. This is where we get the angle movements again. And stretching out the angles and knees and again stretching on your foot, balancing, 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 balancing. Excellent. Okay, let's change feet. Start. And again, you want to find that balance of big toe, little toe, and heel. It takes some practice, but you try not to fall off. All right, so you've got one leg behind you, one leg arm in front of you, one arm down. And you're going to stretch into those three positions, and as you stretch, you're going to balance. Yes. And now you're going to pull all the, the elbows and the knees in, and that's going to create an angled shape. And you're still balanced there. Excellent. So we're going to use that idea of balancing and angled shapes in and out to create the image of lightning. All right? So you're going to start out, and then you're going to come in, and then you're going to go out and come in. Or you can start in and go out, and you can fall off. That's okay. That's, that's a suspension. We'll do that a little bit later. Um, so we've got this idea of balancing. And what we're going to do now is we're going to build some combo movements that include balancing and curving. And as we do that, we're going to start with the idea of swinging our arms. So that even though we're doing cur curving shapes, we're going to build some momentum that will help us turn around and do this centrifugal force turn. We can do that with one arm. We can do it with the arms going up and over to turn us around. Okay, so you've got this curving, swinging momentum that takes you around all different kinds of directions, and you're still having to balance to do it. Um, the other way we can use balance is with uh, the idea of falling uh, from, from the lightning pose, going out and ending in a fall, and the last way we're going to do it is through to make a suspension. So at the very end, we're going to be doing these big waves. And the suspension is, starts with the curving movement. It goes through a balance. And you hold the balance as long as you can, even though you're going forward. 